Okay, this is uh, more topics on rational models. On this first function here, it describes the number of deer in West Virginia of hunting were illegal. And according to this uh, model, what is the population of deer approaching as time approaches infinity? Notice time is playing the role of the x variable. And any time the x variable is approaching infinity, that's a question about the horizontal asymptote. Okay, it says what is the population approaching as time approaches infinity. So this is the same as saying what is the limit of this function uh, as uh, t approaches infinity. When you see that, the independent variable approaching infinity is a horizontal asymptote question. To answer a horizontal asymptote question, look at the degree of the numerator and denominator. The degree of the numerator is to the third power. Here's why. This is to the second power, and if you take another first power and multiply it across, you'll get a t cubed. In fact, foiling this together, you'll get a 4t squared minus 4t plus 1, but the important thing is a 4t squared right here from squaring this times another 3t takes you up to a 12t cubed. So this is a degree 3 on the top. On the bottom, squaring this, you'll get a 16t squared. So the degree on the top is to the third. The degree on the bottom is to the second. And reviewing that one page where it gives all the uh, the uh, uh, things on how to find vertical asymptotes and, and horizontal asymptotes near the beginning of section uh, 2.4, uh, the best way to find vertical asymptotes, is, uh, is, sorry, horizontal asymptotes, the best way to find horizontal asymptotes is to look at the degree. And when this uh, power up here, the degree of the top, which is to the third, is bigger than this degree on the bottom, which is to the second, then that means it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. When it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote, that means it doesn't level off, and it's going to be going off to infinity. So the answer to this problem is infinity on that. Okay. And again, you can say that what's the limit as t approaches infinity. Okay. You can look at it, if you could graph it, it would be a tough one to graph because you'd have to put all this in, and you can't even do that on the Excel sheet very easily. You'd have to foil it all together to do it, but you would see on the far right of the graph, it just keeps on going up. Okay, part B says, what are the x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes? Okay, well, to find the x-intercepts, uh, you set the numerator equal zero. So that's all this stuff. So this is going to equal zero where either part is equal to zero. So one part is where the 3t plus 1 equals zero. And if you set 3t plus 1 equal to zero, you would subtract the 1 and divide by 3. Okay, setting this 3t plus 1 equals zero, you subtract the 1 and divide by 3. So negative 1 third is 1x-intercept. The other one, set the 2t minus 1 equal to zero. Add 1 and divide by 2, and you get 1 half. So these two are your x-intercepts. How do you find vertical asymptotes? Set the denominator equal to zero. So that's the 4t minus 5 equal to zero. And then uh, add 5 and divide by 4, and we get 1.25. As long as we don't have the same number here as here, then we're okay. So the x-intercepts are right there, and your uh, vertical asymptote is right here. And the, these are different numbers. The 1.25 is not an x-intercept, so that is the right answer. 1.25 is a vertical asymptote. That's where the graph goes vertically uh, up towards uh, infinity. It just keeps going up or keeps going down in that spot. And here is where it hits the x-axis. Okay, now we're supposed to draw a graph of this function. Okay, so the first thing you do is draw the, uh, now I'm going to do this in pieces here to explain why it looks the way it is. So draw an x and y axis and put all those things on the graph that we already got. The um, x-intercepts, they were at negative one-third and one-half, and draw a vertical asymptote, this dotted line right here at five-fourths. Now what you do is plot a point to the left of everything. Okay, what I mean by left of everything is left of your vertical asymptotes and x-intercepts. So the farthest left thing is negative one-third, so I need to plot a point to the left of negative one-third. Anything will work to the left of negative one-third, a number less than negative one-third. So I'm going to put in negative one. So I'm just going to run that through to see if, it, if I get a negative or a positive number. Well, putting a negative 1 in here, I, I do it all the way through here. 3 times negative 1 plus 1, then here's 2 times negative 1 minus 1 squared, and then 4 times negative 1 minus 5 squared. Just putting the negative 1 in all over the place. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus 1 is negative 2, but the important thing is that it's negative right for this factor right here. Putting the negative 1 in here, sure, I get like a negative 3 or so, but when you square it, that puts it back to positive. Same thing down here, when I square it, you're going to get a positive. So I end up with a negative from this times a positive from this because this is squared times a positive from this is squared. And a negative times a positive is a negative and a negative divided by a positive is a negative. That means that in this section here, 
to the left of this first x-intercept, the graph is negative. What does negative mean? It means it's below the x-axis. So the graph is below the x-axis, and it is there is no horizontal asymptote. Remember, that was from the first problem. There is no horizontal asymptote, so it does not level off. So it's heading towards negative infinity down here. It's not flatlining. It can't go up because there, we already found out that it's negative in this section. Now, here's what you do. The, draw a graph coming up to that point. Now, at that point, that's an x-intercept. That x-intercept came from this factor right here, first power. So it doesn't bounce. It goes through. Goes through that, goes to the second x-intercept. The next thing I come across is this x-intercept. This uh, intercept 1 half came from this, which is squared. Even powers bounce. So that bounces, and the next thing it comes to is a vertical asymptote, so it's heading on up to infinity. Check out this vertical asymptote, 5 fourths. It came from here. It squared, so it bounces. It goes up to positive infinity, and it really doesn't cross it. It just goes vertically up, and it starts on the other side of that vertical asymptote and comes vertically down. Okay, that's what a bounce looks like on a vertical asymptote. Uh, if it was to an odd power, if this were going up here, the other side, it would start on the opposite side. But it, it stays, an even power. Notice how this stays on the same side, on the even power. So this is going to stay on the same side. And then what does it do in the long run? Well, it's coming down along this vertical asymptote. At some point, it has to turn around because there is no uh, x-intercept. And then does it flatline? No, because there's no horizontal asymptote. So there's only three choices. It either keeps going down. It can't because there's no x-intercept. Either flat lines because there's a horizontal asymptote, but there isn't any. So the other option is that it goes back up. And so if there's no horizontal asymptote on this side, there's no horizontal asymptote on that side. So that's all the features of that graph. And the question was, um, well, it just says to sketch, but sometimes it might say, oh, what is the largest x value in which the graph is negative? When it says the graph is negative, that means that it's below the x-axis. So what's the largest x value that's below the x-axis? Right here at negative one-third. And, and that will do it. That's on that one. So that's the entire graph. So we can answer some questions. Um, what is the limit as t approaches 5 fourths? Well, here's 5 fourths, and it's approaching infinity because on both sides, it's approaching positive infinity. So it's approaching infinity at 5 fourths. Okay, let's see. Here's a little summary of, of asymptotes being to odd powers or even powers. Okay, vertical asymptotes to even and odd powers. Like this one has to be to an even power because it was a bounce type of thing like what we saw up here. This is the same type of picture as this right here. Here's the graph going up on both sides. On on both sides it's heading towards positive infinity. So the limit as x approaches negative two, which is where the vertical asymptote is, would be positive infinity or just plain old infinity. This is a an upside down volcano type of look. It's a bounce that goes downwards towards negative infinity. So the limit as x approaches negative two, since that's the spot that's in question and that's where there's a vertical asymptote on this particular graph, would be negative infinity. But this one on the left-hand side, it's going vertically up towards positive infinity. On the right-hand side of this vertical asymptote, it's heading down toward negative infinity. If they're going in opposite directions, then the limit doesn't exist. Okay, So the limit as x approaches negative 2 here doesn't exist because on one side, it's going straight up. On the other side, it's going straight down. Now, you can look at one-sided limits. Like, for example, the limit as x approaches negative 2 with a little negative sign above it on the right means looking at the left-hand side. That's what the negative on above this two means. It means looking at negative two on the left hand side, right there, means left hand side. And on the left hand side it's going to positive infinity. Just like if you see a positive sign after the two, that means on the right hand side. And on the right hand side it's going to negative infinity. So uh, we'll stop it there and we'll pick up the next one on the next video.